Philippians. And I say good music makes a difference. One of the best things that you can do, well, the best thing you can do is open the Word of God and let the Word of God get in your heart. But get good, godly Christian music in your home, in your car, uh, in your earbuds, in your phone. And fill your heart with good godly music. Well, tonight we're going we're gonna to continue our series tonight on being an overcomer. We're in 2 Corinthians tonight. Not 1 Corinthians, but 2 Corinthians. And we're in the last, second to last chapter, chapter 12. I want you to notice with me, I'm going to read a few more verses than I normally do to set the context. Look at verse 6. Verse 6, our, our key verse is verse 9. That's the verse we're going to key in on tonight. But I want you to see where this verse is and what's being said about it and what's going on. And the author, of course, is God. And God uses using the Apostle Paul. He's writing to the Christians in the city of Corinth. And they've had some struggles. You know, I'm, I'm glad that the, that the, the, the first and second Corinthians in the Bible, how depressing it would be if you open your Bible and everybody was perfect. Wouldn't that depress you? Because that would mean that there's nobody in there that would be like me. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. And so we see in the, uh, the Corinthian church, a, a church that was, quite frankly, pretty screwed up. <laughs> they had a lot of struggles. And I say, thank God, because if, if God can help them, God can help me. But notice with me in, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 6, the Apostle Paul writing here under the inspiration of God, he said, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he, he, seemeth, what he seemeth me to be, or that uh, he heareth of me. So pause there. He said, what's Apostle Paul saying? God did some special miracles during that time. It was the age of the apostles. And God was saying, hey, everybody, hey, this is me. This is my hand. This is my work. This is my church. These are my, these are my speakers. And, and God would allow them to lay their hands on somebody and listen, dead people would come back to life. How many think that would be pretty interesting? All right, that would be a church service I would not want to miss right there, all right? Sick people, people that were blind could open their eyes. Now, we're not talking about these faith healers today. These were genuine people. They were, they were maimed and they were hauled. They were blind. They didn't have arms and legs. Some of them were dead. Listen, God did amazing things and people looked, stood back and said, wow. That Apostle Paul, he's something. The Apostle Paul said, no, please understand, I'm just, I'm just a Christian like everybody else. Notice with me in verse 7. He said, unless there, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. Notice God's answer. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now notice Paul's conclusion from this. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities. Such a contradictory statement. He said, those things that are bad, he says, you know what? In, in fact, they're actually good. He says that uh, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so very much for this wonderful passage God, we thank you, dear Lord. God, we could get this idea that the Apostle Paul was some superstar, some superhero of the Christian life. But God, he was just a man. And God, he had issues and problems and things that he didn't like in his life. But Lord, we thank you for this wonderful truth. And God, we thank you for, Lord, showing us through him, God, that God, we can be an overcomer in this life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight to know and learn, Lord, how do we overcome by God's grace? Thank you, Lord, for that all-sufficient grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, 
this is definitely, this is last week, last week we learned that we and I, we can be an overcomer through faith. Faith that there is a God, that that God hears and answers prayer, and that God will and does help us in our life. That we can believe and God can work in our heart. Listen, God may not change the situation, but he can change the same. God might not take away the problem, but God will give us, listen, the peace in the midst of the problem. That is believing that God is real and God has a plan. And listen, we trust God through the hardships of life. That's overcoming by faith. Recognizing that God is sovereign and God oversees and God walks with us through the deepest valleys of this life. And we trust that he's good and that he's right and he will bring us through. That's overcoming by faith. Today... As we're in this passage, we're going to learn how we overcome, not only by faith, by trusting in God, but we're going to see how does the Christian overcome through grace, through God's grace. Now, you can raise your hand, you don't have to raise your hand, but I would imagine if I would ask you a question tonight, is there something about your life that you would change? I would raise my hand. I would say certainly, absolutely, there, there, are, some, there are things in my life that, boy, if I had the power, the opportunity to change, I would change them. You may, I would ask this question, maybe some of you, if I were to ask this question, you would say, is there a circumstance or an issue or a problem that if you could, if you could just press the easy button, press the easy button and get rid of it, boy, you'd say, man, I'd be like, I'd be pressing that button left and right. <laughs> all right, I got a number of things that I would love to just get out of my life, all right? Like, this is the first of the year, we have to start doing our taxes. Can you believe we have to start doing our taxes again? I thought we just did taxes, all right? If I could press the, press the easy button and not have to do taxes, that'd be wonderful. I'm, I'm enjoying this, the 15th day of January, and we have yet to have, since Christmas time, any appreciable snow. If I could just... Press the easy button and get right to May with no more snow, I would press that easy button. I would sit here and press that easy button, listen to the easy button broke. But I can't, all right, because this, this is Michigan. Now listen, there are things in our life that all of us would probably change. Things that we don't like, things that we don't appreciate. There are situations, circumstances, can I even be so bold so frank say there are people in our life that if it were be possible and we could say, Lord, would you take care of that and... Uh, and, we, and it would be so great if the Lord would take care of that. But listen, friends, God does not always do that. The Apostle Paul here is writing, and what we find out is that first we see in verses 1 through verse 6, Paul's promotion. Paul's promotion. Notice with me, just back up a little bit. Look at chapter 12 and verse 1. He says, it is not expedient for me, but doubtless uh, to glory. He says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. God spoke through the Apostle Paul. God gave him, you think about that, the book of Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Hebrews, all of those books, God spoke to the Apostle Paul. You think, my soul, what can you imagine being used of God to pen half of the New Testament? God did special miracles through the Apostle Paul. The Bible records in the book of Acts how God did things, miraculous, amazing things. Listen, that just aren't, uh, just we, we don't experience today. And by the way, can I just pause here? Two things, just let me, let me, let me uh, dip, dip my toes in some water here. Number one, the, the, he says he was an apostle. And if you read this passage, he said, truly the signs of an apostle were, oh, were, were, were manifest in me. You said, what was that? Well, an apostle saw Jesus with his eyes. An apostle heard Jesus with his ears. An apostle was one personally commissioned by God, and there were signs and power and miracle. Now, those were the apostles. There were 12 that Jesus had. There were several more in the New Testament. We do not have apostles today. Now listen, there are those in different churches and denominations that call themselves an apostle. Can I say they are liars? I'll just be so bold to say they're liars. In fact, you say, Pastor, that's mighty bold. Well, you know, Jesus says that in the book of Revelations. He said there was a church at the church of Ephesus. He said there are some people calling themselves apostles, and you have examined them and found them liars. All right? And liars are friars. Just want to remind you of that. All right? Now, can I just tell you this? All right? Listen, there are not apostles today. Listen, God appointed apostles, and by the way, all the apostles died of martyrdom. 
All the apostles, the Bible says, were the, the off scatter. They were abused. They were used. They were hated. The apostles or the self-proclaimed apostles, they listen, it's for pride and preeminence and power. Because I guarantee you, all those guys running around saying, hey, I'm an apostle. Say, when's the last time you raised somebody from the dead? All right? When's the last time you went down to the children's uh, uh, hospital, the DeVos Children's Hospital, and laid your hands and saw somebody rise up from a sickbed? I guarantee you the answer is none. That's because there's no apostles today. And by the way, you say, why is that? Because God is very clear. First, in 1 Corinthians 13, you can look this up, fact check this. 1 Corinthians 13, the Bible says the age of those miracle signs would come to an end. The time of tongues, the time of miracles, they would all come to an end. Because the Bible says to us that the just shall live by what? By faith. Not by sight, but by faith. Now we see in these first few verses Paul's promotion. That God did amazing things. But then, of course, we get into verse 5 and 6 and down through verse 9 and 10. We see Paul's problem. The Apostle Paul traveled all over the known world at that time. Preaching the gospel, planting churches, doing things. But God allowed something to come into his life. The Bible is vague about that. God veils that. He says, what was the specific problem? Well, we're not sure. There is a reference in Galatians chapter 4. He says to them, he says, if it were possible, you would have taken your eyes and given them to me. So some, some folks, they estimate, well, maybe the Apostle Paul had something, some problem with his eyes. Uh, over there in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul says, listen, he says, when I was with you, he says, my bodily presence is weak and my speech is contemptible. He might have had some sort of physical ailment that made him very sickly, but we don't know. But here's the point, the point that God wants to make is Paul had a problem. You know what that's indicative of? All of us have problems. All of us has situations and circumstances in our lives, whether they're physical, whether they're, per whether they're mental, emotional, financial, relational. In some way, listen, there's something in our life that we really wish wasn't there. I can see the agreement in your eyes tonight. And the Apostle Paul, notice with me back here in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, notice with me in verse 8. So what did the Apostle Paul do? He was a godly man, gives us a good example. He says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. The Apostle Paul recognized, you know, this is slowing me down. It's hindering me. It, it's a bother. It's a problem. I really want it. And so he went to God in prayer. So here's a great example. So what do you do when you have something or someone or some situation? Go to God in prayer. God's a prayer hearing and God, a, a prayer answering God. And God didn't answer that prayer. Hey, listen, if God doesn't answer the first prayer, pray a second prayer. Amen? That's, a good, that's another good example. Persistence in prayer. He went back the second time. He kept going. Listen, he kept ministering. He kept serving. He kept preaching. He kept writing. He kept doing all the things that God wanted him to do. By the way, that's a great example. What do you do when things aren't good and things aren't going well and you don't like your situation, you don't like your circumstance? Maybe you're in pain. Maybe it's something that's really hindering. Just keep going forward. God used the Apostle Paul in in the midst with his problem and his pain and this issue. God continued to use him and God will continue to use you and God will continue to use me. If we'll just keep trusting him and just take one step after the other step after the other step, just keep moving forward. That's a great example. He prayed a second time, God, I prayed and you didn't answer. Lord, would you please take this away? And God didn't answer and sometimes, can I just say, God is under no contractual obligation to answer like we wouldn't expect. It's, it's kind of like when your phone's going off, the other person on the end of the line is expecting you to pick it up. All right? When you get a text message, there's an unwritten code that if you are uh, not indisposed or if your phone's not off, listen, you get back immediately. I know when I send a text, I'm like, what do you mean it's more than 35 seconds and you haven't got back with me? Come on, it's, it's the, the age of instant, instantality. Now listen, listen, God is under no contractual obligation to answer you or me on our timetable. He's God, we're not. Do you know that there's three legitimate answers to prayer? Just like there are three legitimate answers when somebody asks you a question. Number one, the answer that we all love is what? Yes. Yes, that's the only answer that we're really looking for. But that's not the only answer. God can answer a prayer, yes. 
Number two, God can answer a prayer no. Do you know that no is a justifiable answer when it comes from God? When God says, no, this is not my will, God this says, this is not my plan, this is not my purpose, it's not what's going to bring me glory or, or, or help you or for your good, God can say no. He has the right to say no. And sometimes God will answer our prayers, not yet. Now, not yet is the most confusing, all right? Yes, I love, no, I don't like, but I, I, can, I can live with it. But not yet is really confusing. Because it's kind of kind of a yes and kind of a no. It kind of puts you in the middle. But listen, you know what God says to Paul? After three times, God finally gives Paul an answer. Notice what his, his, the answer is in, ver, in verse 9. He says, for this thing, and he said unto me, he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. You know what God is saying there? I am enough. God's Grace is enough. Christian, let me help you out tonight. In this life, in this, in, in this wicked world that we live in, listen, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have pain. You're going to have problems. You're going to have situations, circumstances that you don't understand or you don't appreciate. And they're a thorn. Ever get a thorn in your foot? Ow! I can't imagine having a thorn in my side. Ow! All right, that just makes me hurt thinking about it. I don't know, I used to pick the little blackberries uh, uh, when I was growing up. And listen, you'd, I love the blackberries, but I hated the thorns. Somebody gave me some, bush, uh, some berry bushes one time, and, and I didn't know that they made uh, thornless berries. And for years I had these berries. I'm like, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow. All right, now I discovered they had thornless berries. What's that? Can I just say this? No one appreciates the thorn. But can I help you out tonight? Let me give you this truth. God is enough say that with me god is enough one of the greatest days of your christian life is when you and i realize listen the problem it's not going away the issue the condition the circumstance the problem listen it's not going away and so what do you do you recognize this god is enough he is enough his grace is sufficient now tonight i want to bring out just a few truths so that we can kind of put some flesh on this just five very quick truths in this passage that you and i can that, that if we take and put it into our our lives and our soul it will help us to overcome these issues and problems by and through God's, listen, all sufficient grace. First of all, number one, understand that we have an adversary. Life doesn't happen in a vacuum. We have an enemy. Notice with me in verse 7. It says here that there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of who? The messenger of Satan. Understand, first of all, understand that we do have an enemy and he is after you. He's trying to break up your marriage. He's trying to lead you into uh, depression, discouragement. He's trying to get you uh, uh, dissatisfied, disillusioned. Listen, he's trying to get you totally off track. We must start with the understanding if we're going to overcome by God's grace. Who are we overcoming? Well, we're going to overcome the devil, number one. We have an enemy. Number two, number two, I've already mentioned this, but I'll just say it specifically. Number two, realize God does not always answer our prayers our way. God does not always answer our prayers our way, our way. And Christian, we have to be okay with that. Moms and dads, you understand. You have to, the, uh, the kids, they have to be okay. When you say it's this way, it's this way. All right? Listen, I learned a long time when Mama Popel said, because I said so. It's good enough. <laughs> All right? Can I just say this? We need to realize God does not always answer our prayers our way, and it's okay. Don't pout. Don't quit. Don't fuss. Don't fume. Don't stomp off. Don't close your Bible and leave church. Under, realize that God does not always answer our prayers our ways. Number three, number three, accept. 
So first of all was to understand we have an enemy. Number two is to realize God doesn't answer our prayers our ways always. Number three is accept that God allows hardships for our humbling. Continue reading on in verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan. Notice this, lest I should be exalted above measure. Number three, accept that God allows hardships for our humbling. And I could also put on in there for our perfecting. God allows hardships to come into our life for our humbling and for our perfecting. God knows, listen, God knows that we're a work in progress. God knows that there are flaws in my character. God knows that there are areas of my Christian life that I need to grow. I need to mature. I need to work through the, the, the issues and the problems that I have and the issues and the problems that you have. And God will allow that hardship, those hard things, those hard people, those hard times to come into your life and come into my, listen, so that we will humble ourselves and recognize this. Well, the first thing, we need to recognize that we don't have all the answers. You know, it's a humbling thing to recognize you don't have all the answers. Uh, number two, sometimes God will allow these hard things, hard people, hard sins, so that you and I will come to the place where we recognize not only that I don't have all the answers, but sometimes I don't have a solution. I literally can't fix it. And for a guy, that's a problem, all right? I pride myself with duct tape and WT-40. Listen, I can fix almost anything, all right? It may not be right, but bless God, we'll get it working. But can I just say, when there are things and situations that I come to, and listen, I can't fix it. God will allow us to be humbled to recognize that there are things that only he can fix. There's only things, there's things that only he can take care of. It's bigger than me. I literally, I can't lift it. I can't push it. I can't get it out of my way or out of my life. It's there. And God allowed it to come. And I just have to back off and say, God, God, I, I'm not big enough. I'm not wise enough. I'm not strong enough. God, I can't, I don't got this. And so, Lord, I need you. Accept. We need to come to a place where we accept that God allows these things to come into our life to bring us to the point of recognizing, listen, that we can't and he can. God will allow these things to come into our life. That's how we overcome. Number four, number four, we need to embrace God's all-sufficient grace. We've already read verse 9, but God says, my grace is sufficient for thee. We need to embrace it. We need to, under, we, we need to, we, we need to, we need to draw it close and say, God, you're right. You are enough. You, God, can give me the grace to deal with the pain, the problem, the person, the persecution. Paul embraced God's grace. God did, listen, God didn't remove the situation. And God did not remove Paul from the situation. God said, Paul, I'm giving you the grace to keep going forward in the situation. Embrace God's grace. Embrace it. Clo take it close to you. And, 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 and in your mind and in your heart, say, God, you are enough. God, you can get me through. God, I believe you can give me the peace and you can lead me through the path. And God, in the midst of the pain and the problem, God, you can do it. And I can do it through you. I'm embracing God's grace. I'm accepting and, 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 and understanding that his grace is what will get me through. We must embrace God's all-sufficient grace. And hey, how do, you know, how do you know that you've gotten there? 
that you have accepted and, and understood and, and that you've to the place where you've, you've given God this thing. Well, notice with me Paul's, Paul's astounding statements here. They're really, uh, apart from un, uh, embracing God and his grace, it's, 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 it's actually foolish. In verse 10, at the, very, at, the, at the end of verse 9, he says, Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. Those are the times when we're sick and we're weak, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities. That means when I don't have enough. In persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Notice this. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Number five, how do we overcome through God's grace? We rejoice in this truth that God is at his best in my life when I am at my worst. How do we overcome through God's grace? We rejoice that God is at his very best. His working in my life is most tangible, most visible, most memorable. Listen, when I'm going through the worst things in my life, the lowest valleys, the deepest pain. Listen, when I'm at my worst, I can trust that he is at his best. I understand, listen, when life is difficult and, and things are tight and, and, and the pressure is mounting. Listen, listen, I can say thank God. Thank God because, listen, as I walk through this valley, as I go through this problem, as I weather this storm, listen, when life is at its worst, God is at his best. That's why Paul said, listen, bring it on. In our vernacular, he would say, listen, bring it on. Bring it all on. You know why? Because God had proved himself faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Paul knew God had gotten him through so much. And God will continue to be faithful. Listen, friend, when life is at its worst, when I'm at my worst, when I'm at my weakest, God is at his strongest. When I have no ability, you know what I need to, I need to rest in that he has all of the ability. God is not looking for you and for I, listen, to lift our own burdens and carry our own loads and figure out our own problems. God is, God is looking for us to take our hands off of them and say, God, you're enough. And God, I need your help. That is overcoming through God's grace. Let's go to God right now. Let's ask him for help. Father, we come before you this evening. And Father, we thank you for this passage of a very transparent man, a very powerful, very preeminent man, who yet, Lord, was so very humble to admit he had problems. He had issues and situations and circumstances he did not understand or like or appreciate. But God, he had the faith to trust you. And God, he allowed your grace to get him through them. Lord, I thank you for your all-sufficient grace. God, thank you that you are enough. God, we fail so often in this life. God, we faint and we give up. And when we do that, Lord, what we're really saying is, God, you're not enough. That God, that you made a mistake. You brought me to the wrong place or the wrong person. Or God, you've given me a problem that is bigger than me and bigger than you. What an insult. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for insulting your character, your grace, your wisdom, your love, and your power. God, help us tonight to embrace your all-sufficient grace. God, help us to understand, Lord, in this life, God, you don't take away, many times you don't take away the pain or the person or the problem. But God, you give us the grace to go forward through them. Lord, help us tonight as your people. Help us, God, to just bring our hearts before you and bow in humble prayer and say, God, God, I'm not smart enough to figure this out. God, I can't, I can't move this mountain. God, I can't. I can't fix this problem. God, only you can. And God, give me the grace every day to get through it with you and for you. 
Let's stand tonight with our heads bowed and our eyes closed as the musicians begin to pray, play a verse of invitation. Christian,